Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we would look at previously used CPA questions. Those questions were used by the AI CPA on the actual CPA exam. Those questions are the real deal. They may appear again on the CPA exam in one way or another, if not word for word, but the same concept will be tested. And specifically, we're dealing with regulation questions. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including income tax course and hundreds of CPA questions. On my website, you will find material such as PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice, true, false, and 2,000 plus CPA questions. I strongly encourage you to visit my website. Let's take a look at the first question. So in the blue box here, I would reference to you in which chapter this topic is covered in case you need to go, go ahead and review the material, okay? So basically the question is, what's Austin's share of ordinary income? Fair enough. Austin and Baker are equal partners in AB partnership. And the tax here, the ordinary income for the partnership is 20,000. Ordinary income is 20,000. The partnership has a long-term capital gain of 1,200. I know I don't, I don't care about this because they're asking me for ordinary income. And the basis is 40,000. They receive a distribution of 5,000. So what is the ordinary income? Well, the, or, the only ordinary income for Aston is the ordinary income of the partnerships times 50%, which is $10,000. Now, why don't we tax the distribution, this $5,000? The distribution is assumed to be coming from ordinary income, from the profit. So that's why it's already taxed. So the ordinary share, the ordinary income share for Aston is $10,000, therefore the answer is A. These questions, these type of questions are very, very common on the CPA exam, so you want to make sure you are familiar with such scenarios. Let's take a look at this question. Decker, an individual, owns 100% of Acres and S Corporation. At the beginning of the year, Decker's basis in Acre was $25,000. Acres has ordinary income during the year in the amount of 10000 and a long-term capital loss in the amount of 4000 Decker has no other capital gains or losses during the year. What amount of the long-term capital loss may Decker deduct this year? So this is basically from Chapter 22 because it talks about S-Corporation. But really, this is not really an S-Corporation question. Basically, what they're asking you here is two things. Well, it is part of S-Corporation, but it's also part if you know the rules for capital losses. So they're asking you how much long-term capital loss they can deduct. Well, how much long-term capital loss do they have? They have $4,000. Remember, long-term capital losses are separately stated items. So if you don't know what separately stated items are, well, don't, don't take the exam. So you want to make sure you know what separately stated items are. Go my, to my chapter 22 and you would learn all about them. Now, that's the one thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know is they have 4,000 of capital losses. Well, this 4,000, it's going to transfer to the individuals, to the Deckers, to Decker personal return. And on Decker personal return, you can only deduct up to 3,000. So basically, this question is testing your knowledge. Do you know how much we can deduct in capital losses for an individual per year? And the answer is $3,000. They didn't come out and ask you the question. They frame it in a S corporation question to test your knowledge to see if you know the separately stated items. Let's take a look at this question. This question deals with AMT, AMT tax preference item. Now make, make sure you remember the corporate AMT is gone because President Trump lowered the rate to 21%, uh, so practically gone. Um, this is personal. So West is a single, has no dependent, and does not itemize. West provide the following information in his current year return. Now, AMT is not an easy topic, but if you want to learn about AMT, you can go to my website, and oh, I'm sorry, to my YouTube. I have seven lectures about AMT, covering AMT from A to Z. So you need to know all these all these lectures in order to have a good understanding. So what is the amount of West AMT tax preference? Okay, long-term capital gain. Well, long-term capital gain is not an AMT item, so that's out. Percentage depletion in excess of property adjusted basis is this 
a preference item? And the answer is yes, this is a preference item. So you need to know what the preference items are. Once again, go to my website because there's a lot and you need to have a good understanding about those preference items. There's preference items, there's adjustments, there's other things. So you want to make sure you're aware of this. Dividend from publicly held companies, it has nothing to do with AMT, no AMT here. So the only thing that's AMT and it's a preference is the $9,000, therefore the answer is A as in alpha. You want to make sure you're comfortable with AMT so you can answer questions on the exam. This question from chapter 17, and this is schedule M1, what, what was Prime's current taxable income as reconciled as prime schedule one reconciliation of income loss per books with income per return a form 1120 us corporation income tax return again schedule m1 it's those topics then you need to go into the exam feeling 100 percent comfortable with comfortable with because surely you will be tested in the multiple choice setting or you may see this in a in a simulation the good news is on my website i have plenty of illustrations and examples about schedule m1 so this is only the lecture i have a couple more examples a total of over an hour and either explanation or actual examples so you want to make sure you go there but let's answer this question to see how it works so prime is an accrual tax basis calendar year c corporation in its current year reported book income before federal income taxes of three hundred thousand. okay which included seventeen thousand of corporate bond interest income Take it out. It's not affected because corporate bond interest income is taxable whether it's for tax or book. Therefore, it's treated the same. It's not. The reason they gave you this is to confuse you between corporate bond interest income and municipal, which is not taxable. But here they're telling you it's included. I'm going to keep it. Also, what's included, a $20,000 expense for long-term life insurance premium on the corporate officers was incurred. Prime was the policy owner and the beneficiary. This is important. Hey, here we go. So they deducted $20,000 on their books, okay, for life insurance premium. However, the policy, uh, the company is the policy owner and the beneficiary. What does that mean? It means they cannot take the deduction. So this deduction that they took for GAP, for book purposes, GAP or book, they cannot take for tax. Therefore, we have to add $20,000 because the company is the beneficiary so to come to the taxable income we have this we have to add this back this 20,000 and there's nothing else other than that so it's basically one item to reconcile pretty straightforward the answer is 320,000 schedule m1 is extremely extremely important everything is important but schedule m1 i could assure you you will be asked about and this is another question about schedule m1 what amount should the what should be the amount of vital year two taxable income as reconciled as vital schedule m1 of form 1120 us corporation income tax return okay so vital scorp is an accrual basis calendar year it's year two reported book income before federal income tax is half a million which included the following items year one state franchise tax refund fifty thousand dollars so simply put we added fifty thousand but we added we added fifty thousand dollars to get to the half a million and this was state franchise tax refund guess what we added it's going to be treated both for tax and book therefore it has really no effect municipal bond interest income also in this in this half a million baked seven thousand five hundred of money bonds what do we need to know about money bonds money bonds are not taxable therefore let me change the color when i come when i when i go to compute my taxable income i have to deduct 7500 therefore my taxable income is 42950 and uh, 42500 not 950 therefore the answer is b you want to make sure because m1 it could be given as as a whole testlet as a whole uh, uh, test task based simulation so you want to be and this will be good news for you if you go to my website and you would learn about schedule m1 bring it on good news easy points as always i'm gonna keep reminding you to visit my website you're gonna study for your cpa once invest in your career make that commitment i'm always here to help you good luck and study